Hello, and welcome to week two of the Starlight Mountains Quilt Along. Okay, I think I've lined up. Hi, I'm Andrea from Happy Cloud Creations. I just wanted to jump on quickly today to go over week two of the Starlight Mountains Quilt Along. Um, I designed the pattern on the Starlight Mountains quilt for the National Quilter Circle for this quilt along. Wanted to wait a couple minutes until some people jump on. I hope everybody can find this video. Um, it's live if this corner says live. Um, if it does not say live, that means you are watching a replay. I hope you guys are all having fun with this quilt along so far. Oh good, I can see comments. Hi Kathy, hi Lynn. Yay! And I didn't have to cancel because of the wind. <laughs> Thankfully, the wind is gone, but the smoke is still here on Western Wa Western Washington. We're safe from the fire, but we just have smoke. Um, it rained a little bit today, but it didn't get rid of the smoke quite yet. So hopefully it'll rain more tomorrow. All right. Oh, cool. Some people are jumping on. I hope you guys are having a great day, and I hope everybody found the link to the new block. Um, I didn't check. It may be in the announcement section. If not, you can search Andrea Smith and the link will show up in the group. If not, I'm also going to add the link in my description after the video is done. I'll add that link. Hello, 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 everyone. Do you guys have questions along the way? Please ask questions. Um, last week, I went over the four at one time flying geese. So I'm not gonna go over that this week. So if you are needing to see directions for the four at one time flying geese, um, the video is saved in the um, media section of this group, or you can go to my blog at happycloudcreations.com. And I've embedded that um, video on my blog post for easy access. And I will do that with this video as well. I'll upload it to my YouTube, and then I'll put it on my blog. So first, before I get into the blog, I had a lot of questions about fourth inch scant seam. And um, if you have a fourth inch foot, you probably don't even like um, think about it because a lot of fourth inch feet, which I forgot my feet in my sewing room, um, will give you. My fourth inch foot gives me a scant fourth inch. The presser foot that I had gotten with my machine does not. It gives a fourth inch, which is a little big. So if you notice in the fabric requirements of the throw, right here, it gives you a little test to test to see if your machine gives you that fourth inch scant seam. Some people are like, it fourth inch isn't that big of a deal um, as long as you're doing consistent seams that that can be true and that can be false um if you are making a quilt that all the blocks are the same and you're just maintaining a consistent seam then all of your blocks will end up the same size because they're all the same block but if you're making a quilt that has different sized blocks or different blocks with different um amounts of seams in them your quilt could have different sized blocks at the end like they might not all end up 16 and a fourth. They should be 16 and a half, the large blocks in this one, and the small blocks should be eight and a half unfinished. So I did a little sample um, sewing just so you could see. So I'll line it, try to line it up for you. So if you can see the difference, the one on the top, was sewn with a scant fourth inch seam and the one on the bottom was sewn with a just my presser foot so if you see there is that much gap difference so each seam is taking up a little more so actually no the bigger one measures at two inches the smaller one it measures up a little bit less than two inches so if you think about that each seam is gonna take up a little bit of that fourth inch. It's gonna take up a little bit. So say your seam's bigger than the scant, each one of these seams is gonna take up a little tiny bit, right? But these ones have different amount of seams. So it's gonna take up a different amount of little bits. 
But if you're doing that consistent fourth inch seam, which is a tiny bit smaller than a fourth inch or scant seam, that's a tiny bit smaller than a fourth inch, they're gonna end up two inches. This will be two inches when you sew these three pieces and press them together, it'll be exactly two inches. Um, yeah, so the bigger one, this one's exactly two inches, this one's slightly smaller. I hope that makes sense. So the very first quilt along I did with the National Quilter Circle was the Snowy Day Quilt Sampler. Some of you have been around here since then, and some of you have not. And one of the blocks had like 12 seams in it, and the other ones only had four. And so a lot of people that were doing that one with 12 inch, 12 different seams in it, their block ended up way smaller than the ones that all only had four seams in it because each of those seams took a little bit of um, extra fabric, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to you guys? I um, hope I'm explaining it good to you. So it does matter if you can do it, awesome. Um, do this little test, sew three strips together, and if your center piece measures two inches wide, then you got a scant and you're good. Um, I just bought my foot on Amazon I went to the Janome website to see which foot I needed, and it said a low shank fourth inch seam um, foot. And so that's, I ordered on Amazon and got it. It wasn't very expensive. And, or you can move your needle. Some machines move needles. Mine does not move needle. I draw my scant on my fabric and sew on that line. So do you draw fourth inch and then you sew inside that fourth inch line, Odie? So if everybody got that down, I'm gonna get into the block. We got a lot of people on here and my kids are on at home recess right now. I finally found a time in the day, I think two o'clock might work. I might have to do next week's at a different time. We'll see. So we're gonna skip over the four one time flying geese if that's in the previous video. <coughs> and then we get down to the square and square. Um, I've tried to make diagrams in here that are readable. The red line is your sew line and the black line is your draw line. So I kind of, I do not recommend using a black pen to mark your lines. I recommend either using a hair marker, which just leaves an indent or a disappearing ink pen. This is one of my favorites. Um, I stopped using these just because the ink runs out and they dry out. So I started using this because it just leaves an indent in your fabric and it never wears out. The only problem is I dropped it on my tile floor and it chipped it a little, but it still works. So you draw a line on your two and a half inch squares, top to bottom, top to bottom. And then you're gonna sew, if you see my yellow thread, you sew just right on the outside of that drawn line. This will help when, it'll help take account for this fold in the fabric. So when I go to iron this, I go to press it, I just like to finger press it open and I match all three of those pieces of fabric up to each other. And then I press it down that way you know this is lining up with the edge of that back of that square. And you just press that down. And then after I'm done pressing that, I go and I just clip off these last, the back two layers of fabric because I don't wanna leave all that bulk in there but you're gonna to want to press that down. Same with this one. You draw the line and you draw and you sew to the outside of that drawn line. Does that make sense to everyone? These, these first two weeks are pretty simple blocks and they go together pretty quickly. So this is what your block is going to look like at first. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the other two corners. Draw your lines. I do not recommend black lines. <laughs> and then sew toward the outside. Um, if you notice, where is it? This one, I didn't sew quite close enough to that line. So I went back and I 
sew it again closer to that line just because I want it right up against that line. That one way when you open that square up, it'll line right up with this corner. So you it right, lines up to, with that corner and I just kind of keep my finger on it and press it down. Just finger press it open, making sure those corners all line up and then press it down with my iron. Where is the yellow thread? Can you see? Is that better? Where's my cam camera? Just sewn on the outside of the black line. Can you see that? Toward the outside, not the inside. You want it on the outside. Um, if you sew it toward the inside of the drawn line, on this side, your block will end up too small. But if you sew it toward the outside of the black line, it'll end up perfect. Perfect. Well, not perfect. It'll end up better. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I want to stress that if your blocks are not ending up perfect, perfect, we aren't perfect humans and they're not going to end up perfect, perfect. Um, they're going to end up as uh, good as your skill level is. And if you're a beginner and this is the first time you've ever quilted, don't expect your quilt to be perfect. But that doesn't matter. You're still going to love it. You're going to still want to cuddle in it. And it's going to be awesome. I was leaving too much space, but opening up the square and matching raw edges is a perfect way to double check. Yes, I, I noticed. Um, I saw this tip. I don't remember who it was. I think somebody on Instagram that if you iron it when you have that back piece still on there, you can make sure it's, and it's less trimming in the long run if you do that, match it up and say, okay, that's perfect. And then you trim them back. And this one's kind of easier to know where to trim because you got the little um, ends of your seams right there. And I just trimmed to there. So now that we got all of our square and squares done, does anybody have questions about the square and squares? Those are pretty, pretty easy. Once you get the hang of them. Then we're going to go to adding our flying geese to the square and squares. Um, when you're trimming up these flying geese, I think I mentioned it yesterday. You're going to make sure you trim these so that this point on the flying geese is two and a fourth inches from the edge on both sides. So like if it's a little bit longer than four and a half inches, you don't want to just trim it all off of one edge. You want to line it up with that two and a fourth inch mark on your um, point so that when you're going to add these together, both the points are going to be two and a fourth inches from the edge. Does that make sense? I hope so. So what I like to do to make those points line up as best as humanly possible that I can, um, sometimes it doesn't turn out, but uh, sometimes it does. And then it makes me really happy. I try to get a straight pin. Some of my pins are bent because I'm not good and I uh, sew over my pins sometimes. So what I do is I take my pin and if you can see that, I poke my pin through the back side of my flying geese at the top of that point. And then I go to the top of the point on this square and square. And I just poke the points through both of them. Nah, I have a really messy board right here. So what I do is I point, poke them in, there you can see that. I poke it through both ends and then I kind of line up these two edges so that it's all straight. And then I'll take this pin without trying to move any of the fabric, put a pin there, and then I will put a pin on both sides just because I like pinning everything and I don't want it to slide when I'm sewing. So I have it all pinned and both of these points are pinned so they are right on top of each other. And then when you go to sew these seams, when you're doing a scant fourth inch seam, 
your seam will line up with the top above that top of that little point. If your seam is a little too big, you might chop off your points. So that's another reason using a scant fourth inch seam is helpful. Um, and then also if you have to trim up these square and squares at all, which you shouldn't have to if you are lining up those corners with the edges, you're gonna wanna make sure there's a fourth inch above this point. And if there's a fourth inch above this point, it's gonna sew right together perfectly. Well, as perfect as you can. And you're gonna do the same thing with this. Once you have the two sides, um, I like to press it and then finger press it open and then press it again. That way your seams, like see these points lined up pretty good and then this one must have slid a little. Did it this morning when I was really tired. I'm fourth inch challenge and I find pinning helps out a lot. Yes, pinning helps me too. Like some people, you brave people that don't pin at all. You guys are really brave. Um, um, Kristen, a scant fourth inch seam is just the needle thread width smaller than a drawn fourth inch. So um, earlier in the video, I was saying, um, my ruler is really worn away. So let's see if you can see. See, you probably can't see, but um, this one's a scant fourth inch. And when I line it up to my ruler, this black line is on the out, outside of my sewn line. It's just a tiny bit smaller. And it just accounts for, for the fold in the fabric. Because when you fold it, it takes up a little bit of that fabric. All right, so then for this one, I do the same thing. I like to line these up. I nest these seams right here. I wonder if you guys can hear that. My daughter is humming. Sorry. You know, at home school, humming during recess. Um, I lined these up so they nest. That's why I um, ironed these ones this way and I ironed this one this way, just so those seams will nest. And then I go with the pin in the center. This one as well. Center, center, and it lines them up, gets them all nice and good. Then you sew those. And making sure your seams consistent from one side to the other is um the best way for your blocks to not end up wonky um like when you're sewing a seam and if it starts trailing smaller to the edges uh, when i'm like um i go and look through all of them if it does look like it's trailing off smaller at the edge i just go through really quick and i just sew it so that i make sure they're all the same consistent size Will all the seams in the entire quilt be sewn at fourth inch scant seam or will it be just these blocks? All the seams in the quilt will be just so that you maintain a consistent seam. Most quilts should be sewn with a fourth inch scant seam um, unless you're just using squares and rectangles. Um, when you're using like flying geese, you don't wanna cut off the tip of your points. And if my seam was too big, these points would have got cut off. We don't want that to happen. So consistent fourth inch scant will make all your blocks end up the um, unfinished eight and a half inch. Next week, our blocks are going to be 16 and a half inches unfinished. So that's why we want to try to be consistent with our seams. That way these, when we sew these, um, so we're gonna have these, Ago, we're gonna have these sewn together in strips for the top and the bottom, and then the next strips will be 16 and a half unfinished blocks. So, we're gonna want them all to line up and fit together like a puzzle. So, I got I have some of mine done. I'm going scrappy, that's why mine are not all the same color this week. Kind of looks like a rainbow box, and then last week. Got some pink, some blue, 
It's in blue and orange. Um, I know somebody in the group was asking, Andrea, show on the flying geese where you sew above the peak uh, to keep your point. Mm -mm. Oh, you probably can see on this blue one. Can you see on the blue one? It just kind of goes right above the peak. That one's probably better. Just right above that peak. Can you see that? And if your seam is too big, it won't be right above the peak. It will be down into the peak, and that's when you chop off your peak. Yay, Linda, I'm so happy you like my scrappy blocks. I'm hoping it looks cheerful and um, like a box of crayons. Um, oh, there was something I was gonna say. Oh, somebody in the group was wanting to make a queen size, and she was unsure of how many pieces to cut out for the queen size. So if you're not making the throw, the quilt pattern was designed to be a throw. And then later people were um, wanting different sizes. So I kind of just put out some suggested, suggested layouts and how many blocks you would need for those layouts. So if you're going scrappy or you're doing a um, queen size or king size or throw or twin, the twin, my suggested, has eight of these blocks. Queen is 20 and king is 24. And so if you're only making one of these blocks and you're doing scrappy, you're going to need four, two, and seven, eight inch squares of color A. Also of color A, you're going to need four, two and a half by two and a half inch squares. Of color C, you're going to need one, four and a half by four and a half. That's your center. And then you're going to need um, your outer color. This one's one five and a fourth inch square. And then you're going to need four of the two and a half inch background color. So if you kind of look at it, you can see that, okay, I'm going to need enough to make one flying geese, the center block, and then all the background blocks. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. A couple of people, you said you liked my blouse. Thank you. My husband actually bought it for me. Like with when I went and had surgery, um, I came home from surgery and he had bought me some tops. I thought that was so sweet of him. Um, does anybody have any questions about this week's blocks? If you are making the throw, which is according to the pattern, you will be making six of these blocks. And then next week, next week, it gets a little harder just because you're making bigger blocks and more but i like big blocks because they go together quickly next week we will be making these mountain blocks which this is my um editor version of the pattern that's why it looks a little different than your your guys's um but we'll be making six of the mountain blocks next week and if you're going scrappy that's where it kind of gets a little tricky so i'm gonna um monday after the pattern's released i will try to post in the group how many pieces you need for one of the mountain blocks. That way, if you're going scrappy, you can just do one of the um, mountain blocks because my, all my mountain blocks are going to look different. So it was like, oh, you can't do the four one time flying geese for the mountain blocks. If you're doing scrappy, you have to do individual one at a time, which I will show you how to do one at a time um, flying geese next week just because um, you'll be making six of each combo. And so four of them will be made with the four at one time, and then two of them will be made with the one at one time. A fourth and inch scant starting to make sense. Yay, Tammy, I'm so happy it makes sense. Uh, Linda, I will finally be able to sew next week. I'll be catching up. Yay, Linda. Um, I know a few of you guys have said that you haven't been able to start yet, but these blocks, these first two blocks, really do go together fairly quickly and um, you'll be able to catch up in no time. I think so. Um, I'm sure you guys are all doing a great job. I'm loving seeing everybody's blocks. Um, if there's no more questions, I guess I will see you guys next Monday. I'm thinking I may do a 7 a.m. live. I know it's not convenient for some of you, but um, now that it's second week of school this week and it'll be third week of school next week for my kids and they're actually doing real schoolwork now. Last week was just like all hardly anything. And now the load is getting a lot heavier. 
And so I'm, I'm trying to sneak this video in right now during the recess, but um, I think next week I'll have to do it at 7 a.m. just that so I can do it before they're awake. And um, I don't have to worry about rushing or, um, you know, worrying about them getting done with their project before I have to start it. So I'll try to be on here next Monday at 7 a.m. And um, I will post this video on my blog. And if you're, I know some people were having trouble finding the link to the to the new download. Um, I am listing that over on my Facebook page, which is Happy Cloud Creations on Facebook. And it's also on my blog post, a link that directs you to the NQC um, blog post where you can download it. So I, I, sometimes that's easier to, way to access it. Um, so you guys can do that too. This this is the first time I have done flying geese. Oh, Christine, Christine, that's awesome. Um, I know at first they sound a little scary. Um, it was for me. I like just kept using the half square triangles, but then I was like, I gotta try these flying geese, and I love them. I love them. I'm making a twin and make eight blocks for the entire quilt. Um, <clears throat> Deborah, you're making a twin. You'll just make eight of this block and eight of last week's block. I can't remember. I don't have the paper in front of me, but if you, it says on the fabric requirements, if you're doing those larger sizes, it has the diagram and below it, it says how many blocks each week you will need to make. All righty. So I'll see you guys next week. And I hope you guys have fun sewing. I hope you stay safe. And um, hopefully there's no fires or hurricanes where you guys are. If there is, I'm sorry. And I hope you guys stay safe. And I will talk to you guys next week.